<laughs> Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We're so honored to have James Arthur Ray. You may have seen him on The Secret, on Oprah. He's been all over the globe. He's international, New York Times bestselling author, and all the above. How are you? We're so excited to have you here. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. So it's you also here. are in Enlighten Us on Netflix, a yes. documentary, not a documentary, yes, a documentary, a documentary on your incredible life story. Holy moly, you've been through a lot. Yeah, if you ever heard of the dark night of the soul, you know, I, I think I'm the dark night of leadership and performance. So mm -hmm. um, it, ha it has been a lot, and it's been very painful and very difficult, and also very enlightening and amazing and growth producing. You know, right. one thing I've learned from you, though, is that pain is the catalyst for growth. Oh, right? you what? did your homework. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been an incredible opportunity. Tell us about that transformation for you. You know, it's, it's made me a lot humbler for sure. It's made me more aware. It's taught me so much about humanity, about myself, about the legal system, about how we operate in the world. I, I mean, I, I really, with all love and, and respect to my friends who, who lost their lives in 2009, that broke my heart. You know, I mean, I, I spent five deep dive days with them really ironically and yet not ironically talking about how to take the difficulties of life and transform those into gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And little did I know how much I would get to practice that. Okay. So I, I can't think, speaking from my personal experience only, I can't think of a better uh, opportunity for me to practice what I taught and what I've studied and what right. I've, I've used for years than the one I've had. Reflecting on that though, and, and you mentioned having to practice that. How did Obviously, that came with a lot of pain. It did, and I didn't do it very well for a while. You know, I, I was certainly not perfect yet. I, I went through every single human emotion, and, you know, anyone who tells you they're never angry is not being honest. Anyone who tells you they're never depressed is not being honest because the full spectrum of emotional experiences are the human experience. And so I, I went through anguish, I went through pain, I went through depression. I, I was angry at God, literally, for mm. a time. And I, I remember I was sitting in solitary confinement at one point and I was just really doing pity party, mm. really, really doing it. And I, and I was like, damn it, you know, I've given my entire life to try to help people. This is the antithesis of anything I would have wanted. And this is my reward. This is what I get. And then, and that was a defining moment for me because in that moment, you know, you mentioned the conversation with God, you know, my higher self, God, the universe, universal mind, whatever you want to call it, spoke to me and said, oh, so you did good to be rewarded. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's powerful. And I was like, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So just to, for the audience, because not everybody knows your story. A lot of people do, but <clears throat> Enlighten Us is about October 9th, 2009. Yes. You were holding a sweat lodge retreat with something like 100 people? No, 52. 52, sorry. And three people passed away yes. in the process. Just so, because not everybody knows the story. So I just want to give a back, a back story on a little bit. Now, I used to think, you know, that if people you know, for law of attraction, if they attracted something horrific like that, something must be wrong with them, right? And as you, we advance- You and a mass and, majority right? of the population mm -hmm. who bought into right? the secret. So then, you know, you start evolving, you realize like this is like a classroom, this thing called life. And you realize that as people advance, there's sometimes even, you know, advanced classrooms. And I feel like you're in like one of the most advanced classrooms you could have. Well, thank you. I, it, it certainly is grad school. Yeah, um, for sure. and and I I firmly I don't believe I know that the great the greatness of the human being is determined by the greatness of the task. You follow that? Mm. You know the task that you either deal with, overcome, or the task that you're beaten back by, and and so you know we grow the most in the crucible of challenge. We don't grow the most when we're smelling the sweet perfume of the roses, even though that's fun to do. Um, we grow the most in the crucible of challenge, and there's even, you know, research by Mihai Cech, Set Me High, and many others that prove we're even most fulfilled uh, in the crucible of challenge when we're going after big things. And so, if you are going to become the very best human being you can become, 
then then get your game face on. You're going to have to become stronger, and you become stronger by pushing in heavier weights. Well, more weight. that's why you're a self-titled Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I just love love what you had to say there because it's so true that straight roads don't make skillful drivers, right? Great metaphor. And um, the work that that Mike Cheek said me high that you spoke to is such a great reference, right? Because it's all about the ability to get in this psychological state of flow. But in order to get in that place, the challenge has to be just beyond your level of skill. But that's when we're sort of most deeply and fully fulfilled. Yeah. It's profound that you would it's, say it in that way. You know, it's, I, I believe that God wants your goals and vision to be bigger than you feel prepared to go after. Because that way, God has to be a part of them. You know, it, you have to be, it, one of my teachers, I've had many, many great teachers, and one of them was a, a shaman out of Peru, uh, Don Jose Luis. And I said to him once, how do you know when the path is the right path? And he said, Santiago, which he called me, which is <laughs> St. James in the Spanish. Santiago, he said, when you don't feel prepared to take it. Mm. Because when you feel prepared to take it, you don't have to be open, in his words, to the becoming. When you, when you feel prepared to take it, don't feel prepared to take it, then you have to be open to something bigger working through you. Mm -hmm. So how do you then become prepared, right? Because I, I don't want to go down this road. I wouldn't, totally I, would, I don't want you, you know, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I would not. And then again, I believe that life always gives you what you're prepared to deal with. And and you, how do you get prepared incrementally? Mm -hmm. It's the small practices every day. You know, I told you how I start my day, and that's just the start. You know, my day is very, very um, habituated. It's very much put in, and this is what I teach the clients that I coach, how to put things into automaticity so that they just happen. And then you have a lot more bandwidth and a lot more ability to be creative and innovative. But that's right. an interesting balance, though. The harmony meets bold action and affirmation. Mm -hmm. well, how do you balance that dichotomy? Well, I'm, thank you for choosing harmony. You know, my, my last well. book was harmony. <laughs> um, and I, I, I tried to debunk the whole idea of balance. And, and I said, let's have harmony. Harmony is dynamic. And, so, and balance is this. This isn't life. Mm -hmm. that, you know, har this is life. And so when you can have harmony in the midst of the storm, then that's what, you know, I, I recently started taking Tai Chi again, and my mm -hmm. teacher says, that's Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. That's Kung Fu. You know, Kung Fu is, is not the movements. It's, it's this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he's right. When you can be there, easier said than done, and I, I totally screw it up. <laughs> so, I know, most so, of the time, so but I'm working you, right? it, and I'm getting better. Right? Welcome so, to life, right? So passion yeah, right? now, uh, after, I mean, you've gone through an incredible journey of, of that dance of where is it that you can be a full leader but not have that God factor or Messiah factor like that God complex? Where, how, how has that changed now since it's, all this went down? It's a daily, sometimes hourly, remembering mm -hmm. and practice because let's face it there's a tremendous amount of hubris that comes from and I've been really blessed you know uh, you mentioned some of the shows I've been on and and I've had offers and all these kinds of things and I've, I've worked with over a million people from 145 different countries and and when you have that many people coming to you to say hey how do I have a better life it's 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 really easy to start thinking you're kind of the bomb Right, and the moment you think you're the bomb, then you're no longer in kung fu, right? You're, you, and universe tends to bomb you, and say, "All right, you're the bomb. <laughs> you know, deal with this." And so, in retrospect, I see my intention. In my heart was always good, always, and yet I see my delivery and my practice sometimes was a bit full of myself. And I, I really got to a point after wrestling for 20 years. You know, it took me. 20 years to become an overnight success. You know, <laughs> I love everyone that, said, right? oh, all these, these people, this, this guy, James Arthur Ray in The Secret, he just came out of nowhere. Okay, you know, <laughs> you haven't seen me <laughs> playing decades. playing credit card shuffle and, and all these things for, for almost two decades. And so I, I, at some level, thought, okay, I've done all this work and I've gone through all this struggle and all this difficulty and I've kind of gotten here. Hmm. So I'm here now. You know, well, you never get here. <laughs> you know, here it's just the next place for the chapter the, to begin, right? Yeah, you reach beginning. one peak and you see the, right. the higher peak 
So I have a coaching see. question for myself I want to ask you. So one thing that I look at with you and I go, holy cow, how can he be so driven? I mean, you're so driven to be, because, I mean, I, you know, it took a lot to do some of the seminars and conferences, and this is no small feat, regardless of the seeker or anything. To do that amount of business, you have to have some serious drive and desire. And I feel like I, I mean, relative speaking, someone may look at me and go, oh, you have some drive and desire, but I think not even like this much as you, can you teach that to somebody? Can you teach desire and drive? Well, desire from the Latin means from the higher self, mm -hmm. which is really cool, or from the heavens. So That's how it's translated. And, and so can you teach desire and drive? Um, yes and no. And, and let me just say, you know, all my former colleagues in The Secret and Elsewhere used to constantly tell me, you work too hard. And I'm, I was like a man on a mission. And there's, that's a key word. I, I would say, no, I don't. You know, because, and, and then before I say that, let me fast forward and say, when I came out of prison in 2013, I was homeless. Mm -hmm. I was 55 and I was $20 million in debt. Wow. Now, <laughs> you know, a reporter said to me, why, did you come back and start doing the same thing? And I said, really, really easy answer. Clarity of purpose. Mm. And that, I think, is so missing in today's world. That's why 800,000 people, according to the World Health Organization, are committing suicide every year. Mm. Every 16 minutes in this country, someone commits suicide. And for everyone who's successful, 20 attempt and are not successful. I think we have a crisis mm. of meaning. Not so much a crisis of economy, a crisis of environment, a crisis of terror. All those things exist and they're important. More importantly, we have a crisis of meaning. And so in my coaching practice, long answer to your question, my primary drive is to help you find with absolute clarity what your purpose is. And when you find what your purpose is in this lifetime, you don't quit and you are driven. Now, do you work 100-hour weeks like I do? Maybe not. Not everyone is, you know, is Elon Musk, mm -hmm. right? You see, he's kind of my hero. <laughs> he's the real Iron Man. Um, but, but nonetheless, you are driven, however you define that. And challenges are defined as temporary setbacks versus failures. So, I mean, hopefully that yeah. helps. Were well, you I've, always this sorry. driven, though? Did you always have this clarity of purpose? No. When no. did you develop that? It took me a long time and a lot of derivations. I mean, I, I cut my eye teeth, a lot of people don't know this, at at t School of Business. I was a C-suite consultant, and so I have this business background, thank, thankful to at t that a lot of people in my industry, and that's why I deal with leadership. Uh, so that I did that, and I was in sales at at t and I was successful with that. And then I thought I wanted to be a musician, and I thought I wanted to be an actor, and, and all these. I, I, I dabbled around with all these things, but here's what I found, is that in retrospect, you know, I didn't want to be an actor. I knew, my spirit knew, that, that I needed to be in front of people somehow, mm -hmm. all right? And so consequently, the voice lessons and the staging and all those things came in handy. I, I didn't want to be in sales, but I knew, but my spirit wanted me to have the ability to have influence. And so in retrospect, all these things fit together and then it doesn't come in a blinding flash of light. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean, I wish I, I did. I thought maybe you were the right? secret Yeah, I'm going to go. Purpose, right? Amazing. <laughs> so, so let's talk about manifesting. Let's talk about the law of attraction because obviously all the experts now look at the, the law of attraction and go, oh yeah, it didn't really teach truth. I mean, there was like glimpses of some truth in there and there was a lot of misrepresentation of what truth is. Tell us about how you view, how you manifest, how you you know overcome your subconscious. What's your viewpoint on all that? How much time we got? Hey, right. uh, All the time yeah, in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, time has us. We don't have time. But nonetheless, law of attraction is real and it's scientific because if you go down to the, the subatomic level, the positron, which has a positive charge, is always attracted to the electron. And they always show up equally. And I could talk about that for days. That's called the law of polarity. Uh, you and I are going to find a positive without a negative or a negative without a positive. But nonetheless, they're attracted. Always, always, always. And so the law of attraction is real. Now, I believe, I'm very grateful for the secret because after two decades, it catapulted me into Oprah and, and a much larger arena. 
where I could potentially start to educate at a deeper, broader understanding. Because if you sit around visualizing in your living room all day long, they'll come take your furniture away, right? And, and so consequently, there's a lot of ways we attract. And we have to understand that 60% of the word attraction is action. Attraction, mm. right? So if you won't act on it, you don't believe it. And if you don't believe it, then you got some work to do. Because what psychology tells us is that 95% of what you do every single day, Rob, is driven by your unconscious. 95%, only 5% conscious. And so that unconscious is like a minimized program down at the, the bottom of your computer screen. You're not aware of it, you think it's gone, but the minute something in life clicks on it, boom, here it comes. And it's, it's taking up space and it's taking up RAM and all those things that I know absolutely nothing about. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, you attract more unconsciously than you do consciously. And so the greatest work that I do is what I call emotional stress hacking. I have an entire methodology and an entire set of tools that I call emotional stress hacking, which, which are not easy ways necessarily, but they're more quick ways to make the unconscious conscious. Mm -hmm. Because recognition is the first law of learning and when you can and transformation. When you recognize it, you're, you're not gonna do anything to transform or change something until you realize you have to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like- it, And that is one of the things, you know, um, uh, a girlfriend of mine was watching the documentary with me when we were watching uh, Enlighten Us. And there's a point where you're in front of the crowd and you're kind of being almost a little harsh to some of the people which is very common in transformational workshops. I said, well, there's a reason why they do that. It's to pull up those reactions so that you can see what is holding you back in life. So explain that a little bit, how you're, when you're teaching, when you're doing transformation, how you want to actually pull those triggers out for people. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a term in psychology called systematic desensitization. And, and so that's one way. If you, if you find somebody who has a hot button, if Which you we really, all have hot we, buttons. Including me, yeah, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And, and don't push it on air, please. Um, <laughs> but, but it, 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 <laughs> I'm human, guys, I'm human, all right? Uh, yeah. but, but nonetheless, if you're really wanting to help them, you push it, and you push it, yeah. and you push it, and you push it, push it, push it, push it, push it, until finally it's kind of, it's systematically desensitized. It's like, whatever, right? And when you get to whatever, now it doesn't have the emotional charge. Now that's one way. Um, but recognition, again, I'll repeat, is the first law of learning and transformation. It's like the person who goes, you know what really pisses me off is people who are angry all the time. <laughs> okay, right? And, and so, <laughs> have you looked in the mirror? You know? Yeah. And, and so that's called projection, mm. you know, which you've heard of a la Carl Jung, I'm sure. And, and so in the work, the real work, I tell my coaching clients my job as a good coach or even in a live event, is not to make you feel better. It's to make you be better. Mm -hmm. Because here's what I know. When you become better, you're automatically gonna feel better. Mm -hmm. And so I need your permission to make you feel worse temporarily or to make you uncomfortable temporarily. And I need you to commit to stepping up to this. And if you can't, that's okay. But really, it truly is. Maybe you're not ready yet. Uh, but if you are, then let's play and let's get through it because the only way to get beyond it is to go through it. Mm. Well, and that recognition will lead to redemption. It does. Your new book. Nice segue. Right? <laughs> She's really good at you're that. You're good. <laughs> Thank you. I think your purpose has something to do with that, you know? Uh, but <laughs> I, That means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Right on purpose. <laughs> Thank you for recognizing that yeah. in me, James Arthur yeah. Wright. So tell me about redemption. Um, yeah, the new book is called The Business of Redemption. The, and the subtitle is The Price of Leadership. Mm. And let's go back to 2009 for a moment. And let me tell you, it was my event. It was my team. It was my choice to do a dangerous activity, a sweat lodge. I'm responsible. And as a leader, that's the price that you have to pay for leadership. If you're not willing to pay that price and step up to that, then you better stand down. Mm -hmm. Because when something goes wrong, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur in this age of an entrepreneur. Oh, it's so romantic. Well, yeah. maybe, you know, okay. Elon Musk said it's like chewing on broken glass and staring into <laughs> the abyss of death. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. Right? Um, but, but nonetheless, it is beautiful. It's tough and it's beautiful. And there's a tremendous amount of responsibility because when something goes sideways, there's only 
one person in the crosshairs, and that's oh. that's the founder, the CEO. Period. Mm -hmm. And you got to step up to that. And so I stepped up to that. You don't throw your team under the bus. You don't you don't you know put place blame. You take it on, as as difficult as it might be. And then redemption is is defined as the the true definition is defined as to gain or regain by paying the price. Mm -hmm. And so there's always a price for the prize. I believe our country is in need of redemption. Right. Let's make Amen. America great again, okay? And with all due respect, I love America and I love the world. Why, how about we make the world great? Mm -hmm. And by the way, who's going to pay the price? Because, you know, I can't look to tax cuts. I can't look to to increase in minimum wage. I can't look to give me a job. I can't look to government or any outside source. I have to look to me. And I have to ask myself, what's the price I'm willing to pay for the prize that I'm going after? That's redemption. And at some point in life, we all need redemption because we sell out for money. We sell out for a paycheck. We sell out our dreams. We sell out on, our, on ourselves. And so this book is all about it's, it's in the business, it's going to be in the business category because it's about leadership, but leadership as I define it, which is truly needed, is leadership of life first and then business second because the two, mm -hmm. there's not just life and business, they're all, they're all intertwined. So how Beautiful. do we redeem ourselves? By paying the price, mm -hmm. by, by really defining first and foremost what purpose is, why that's important to me, and by the way, purpose is always about contribution. It's not about getting, it's about giving. Amen. It always about, is about what am I going to do that will contribute to the benefit of mankind and maybe leave a legacy if I'm really, really masterful at it. Maybe leave a legacy after I'm gone. So find that purpose and then understand that, you know, and here's, a, here's another one. Every, every, I shouldn't say everyone, a lot of people in business and in spirituality and in personal performance say find your passion follow your passion find your passion what we forget to remember is that passion is a latin word meaning suffering right. so what everyone's telling you is find your suffering find your suffering find your suffering follow chew your that suffering. glass <laughs> yeah chew that glass <laughs> good callback um, so you will suffer for your mastery now you don't have to suffer but you will you know pain is not a signal to suffer pain is a signal to grow Suffering comes from resisting the pain, trying to escape the pain, trying to deny the pain. And so, you know, suffering has a certain salvation in it because it peels away the layers of BS and gets you to the core of what's really important to you. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's, I mean, in, in the simplest terms, which I tend to not do, <laughs> um, that's, that's the, the shortest answer, purpose, and then define the price, the reason and the why, and define the price. James, that I to pay. you mentioned earlier creating your legacy. What do you want your legacy to be? I, want, I would like to believe and have people remember that I impacted, influenced, guided, and directed the infinite potential and the destiny of the entire human race. Mm. That's big. I believe right? that is your truth. Thank you. I mean, that's big, I know. Yeah. But if you're gonna go, go, yeah. big. But <laughs> it's, it, it is such an honor to witness your journey, and especially in the events of 2009. I think it is even more inspiring, quite frankly. And I know that uh, there's only eternal life and I honor the three that passed away. Good and job. I also believe that all of our birthright is redemption and anything, everything forward is all possible. And so I do invite the entire world to open up that space for all of us to know that we can redeem ourselves as a country, as individuals and heal all together. So thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for having me. I really Your heart mm -hmm. honestly has been pure gold. Through, and there's never been a moment when it hasn't been pure gold. Thank you. I have felt that so deeply. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. just so deeply. So thank you. So well, much. you guys have done great work okay. and it's much needed. Thank you. So we want to give a little shout out for your mental mastery, the psychology and strategy of superhuman performance. You don't want to miss this one. October 27th and 28th in Las Vegas. Tell them just a little bit about that. What we're going to learn, you know, um, Max Planck, who's the father of modern quantum physics, mm -hmm. says mind is the matrix of all matter. Yep. Now, matter has turned into mystery. 
because matter is no longer this solid stuff that we think it is. According to science, not, not spiritual gurus or personal development gurus, Max Planck says mind is the matrix of all matter. So in Mental Mastery and Power, what we're going to dive deeply into is the dimensions, the five dimensions of your mind, which includes the higher self, the conscious mind, the unconscious mind, even the body, they all work in tandem. And how to use those most, most powerfully to create what you desire and deserve. Because most people, I don't care how successful you are today, you're barely scratching the surface of what your capabilities are. Mm -hmm. For sure, Love that. absolutely. Well, so excited and um, just, uh, we're gonna bring you back at the very end. So stay tuned, you guys, we'll be right back.